our friend here could speak, he or she might very well be saying, oh, my aching back. Back pain is one of the most common of human complaints, which is why new treatments in the works are raising so many hopes. Our Sunday morning cover story is reported now by Martha Teichner. Consider the human spine in all its glory. The 24 vertebrae cushioned by gelatinous discs. The little facet joints that help make your back flexible. All the ligaments and muscles and nerves. The spine's elegant complexity is a miracle of engineering. Or a curse when something goes wrong. I couldn't walk. I couldn't bend over. I couldn't lie down. I'd say, oh, Lord, can't you help my back? It does hurt bad. Eight out of ten Americans will experience debilitating back pain sometime in their lives. And the most common culprit? I think most people would think it's the intervertebral disc, whether it's herniated or whether it's uh, uh, just worn and, and arthritic. Dr. Augustus White, a professor at Harvard Medical School, has literally written the book on lower back pain. He says the easiest way to understand a herniated disc is to think of a jelly donut. This is the crust of the jelly donut, and in the center where the jelly is, it gets squeezed out, and that would be the herniated part of the disc. When what Dr. White calls the jelly gets squeezed out, it presses on nerves, which can mean excruciating pain. Barring serious illness, the first line of treatment may not be what the patient, who's only after a quick fix, wants to hear. You need to make sure the patient doesn't have tumor or infection. But once you rule those out, you can be confident that you're not going to harm the patient by saying, okay, give yourself four to six weeks. Believe it or not, 90% of disc injuries heal themselves after a few weeks, especially with physical therapy. But waiting it out can be torture, and not everybody does get better. So that's where surgery comes in. More than 1.2 million Americans undergo spinal surgery each year. That's triple the number of coronary bypass surgeries, nearly four times the number of hip replacements. Approximately 300,000 of those back surgeries were spinal fusions, where vertebrae are joined surgically, so they can't move. They're often held in place permanently with metal screws or rods. For many patients, surgery is the only answer, salvation, but for all too many others, it can be a nightmare. Unless you're paying on the right side. Which brings us to Dr. Kevin Pauza. So I spent decades treating patients who've had surgery. Patients would do well for a year or two, and they'd always come to me and need more help. Dr. Pauza is a founder of the Texas Spine and Joint Hospital in Tyler, Texas. And in his experience, fusion was usually the wrong answer. And the spine's made to be a structure that bends with uh, every movement that we make. And if we immobilize the segment of the spine, the adjacent segment breaks down. That's known as the domino effect. So my thought was, can we do something to that disc so that we don't have to fuse it? Can we bring that disc back to life? And that's the headline of the story. Imagine a procedure that repairs and regrows discs that doesn't involve spinal fusion. That's no more than minimally invasive outpatient surgery. And I'm going to go uh, to the direct center of your disc where the inspiration came when he thought about how an ordinary cut heals. What heals a cut is something uh, that's very simple. It's uh, two products that are in you and I, they're in everybody. In our blood plasma, they're called thrombin and fibrinogen. For the cut to heal, the two components come together and they make a, sub a substance called fibrin. When the two components in concentrated form are injected into the disc through a kind of squirt gun pause invented, just like epoxy glue, they combine and become fibrin disc and it's traveling through the disc uh, permeating all the tears uh, that exist in the disc and then over time it starts to become firm injected into the damaged disc the compound acts like a sealant filling cracks and crevices and eventually allowing the disc to regrow 
that's exactly like a disc. So if one were to look at that under a microscope, two months after we put it in the disc, it would look like normal disc material. So it allows our degenerated disc to turn into a young, healthy, normal disc. Are you comfortable, Rusty? Yes, no fathers. Okay. Rusty Templeton is typical of the failed fusion patients Dr. Parza sees. He had his surgery in 2008, but the pain came back and was agonizing. I'm going to return your discs back up to the height that they were when you were a teenager. Templeton is given a local anesthetic. The procedure takes about five minutes. There's no incision, no hardware. Did you feel that pressure there? Okay, and your disc is now back up to a normal height. Typically, at first, patients feel discomfort. Some patients even say, gosh, I wish I never had this done. And then several weeks later, the patients just turn a corner. And we tell them that they can expect that there'll be one day where they have pain, and the next day, it'll just stop. Parza is hoping for Food and Drug Administration approval of the procedure by 2015. Phase three clinical trials are underway now at 20 sites around the United States. <laughs> Dr. Parza has said successfully treated more than a thousand patients in his private practice. We started treating uh, the first patients approximately five or six years ago, and the success rate is approximately 86%. So how did Rusty Templeton do? My pain before was at least a 10. And two months after the procedure? It's still around a five, because I have underlying issues, but I can lay down now. I don't sleep in the recliner, uh, so things are better in that way. I can, you know, walk around. I can drive where I couldn't drive before. The pain level I had before the procedure was probably around six to worse eight. Christopher Joseph was in a car accident. How was his pain two months after the procedure? Right now it's at zero. Is this some wild and crazy idea or is this something that really has promise? I think it does possess uh, incredible potential and therefore promise. Uh, my Dr. Michael De Palma is a spine specialist yeah. in Richmond, Virginia. The North American Spine Society has just published his paper on the latest experimental therapies involving disc restoration. Stem cells are something that's being investigated to replenish cells within the disc by injecting them into the disc directly. Um, injecting growth factors, which are proteins, to try to stimulate repair the disc have also been evaluated and investigated. De Palma is involved in four different FDA trials of the new procedures and believes these so-called biologics are the future of back treatment. Based on the results so far, he thinks Dr. Pause's fibrin sealant offers the most promise. If Dr. Pause pulls this off, if, even if it's 50% successful um, with someone, um, is that significant? It'd be huge. And then there's the cost. Compare spinal fusion and fibrin treatment. Treatment for a fusion, uh, and this is the hospital fee, typically is uh, in the $100,000 range, not including the physician's fee. Uh, and uh, again, we don't have a set cost for uh, this treatment yet, but it's approximately 95% less than the cost of a fusion. Pausa expects it to be widely available within five years. It's the first time in history uh, that we've been able to cause new tissue to grow within the spines. This procedure um, is the procedure that really the world has been waiting for. Is it? The procedure is only for back pain sufferers with specific disc problems, but there are a lot of those, and Dr. Kevin Pauza is absolutely sure he's found a better, safer, cheaper way of improving their lives. Lives. It's a little bit easier than surgery, isn't it? Oh, yeah. You did great. We're going to let you rest and recover.